Joining us today is Francis Hunt, otherwise known as the market sniper or the crypto sniper. Francis, thank you very much for joining us today. For those that perhaps don't know you, I'm sure there's only a few, could you just explain a bit about your background? Yes, certainly will do, Alex. Delighted to be back, by the way, and a massive thank you to everyone who um, took our original series viral. It's one of the most watched financial uh, YouTube uh, series, so thank you for that to both those watching and yourselves. Um, so what do I do? Um, well, um, I specialize in helping IT engineers and property entrepreneurs uh, transition to becoming, uh, leaving their day jobs uh, and becoming lifestyle-based traders. Uh, so that's what I do in the day job. I'm known for um, various calls in the forex market, such as the collapse in the Euro Swiss franc. At the beginning of this year, we had a 30% move in copper on the uh, Trump trade. Um, so various technical calls of a macro nature. I am a trader first, uh, a technical analyst, and then a teacher third, so the three Ts. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my space. Your focus is on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, is that correct? Well, I've been an FX trader, an equity trader in many things. I, I happen to uh, assess at the moment that there's quite a unique opportunity in crypto. So we have certainly um, reallocated or reproportioned our interest very strongly on cryptos. This is not to say I, uh, I don't have a foot in the real world for many people in terms of um, everyday currency events, macroeconomics and equities as well. So it's more something we've added uh, to our portfolio, but certainly in a big, big way because there's, uh, we assess there's a great opportunity right now in that space. When did you first hear about Bitcoin? It's a difficult one to answer because it was kind of those, one of those things that's just on the periphery of your consciousness. So I'd expect that it was probably quite a long, long time ago. Um, and I, I, I even hoped that once I'd bought a few and forgot about them and I remember thinking, wasn't there something I, I'd got involved with the currency and, and had some, but unfortunately I wasn't one of those guys to find a couple of Bitcoin in an account somewhere. But I, I think I associated it initially with the gaming community. So very much people that are uh, single-minded, uh, passionate, very male-dominated and very in um, the techie and stroke gaming, online gaming community and that they were buying little extra toys and hacks and things. So I, as I was pretty much through that part of my childhood in a sense, I could sometimes consider them uh, grown children in the game, gaming community, I, I didn't pay too much attention in the initial instance. So now, do you think it's a fad or do you think it's here to stay? Yes, so I've come around um, and this is, a, this is part by its own um, stickability that it's shown. So generally, I don't feel you want to give something too much of your attention when it's very first breaking the ground anyway. Let's see if it's still there for a while. And what Bitcoin has certainly done, and cryptocurrencies as a category as a whole, is it's certainly shown it's not going away. And in fact, it's becoming a growth industry. So now, uh, those early supporters of Bitcoin, which were what often the hard yards, I don't know if you remember initial websites, you know, when they first came out, they were so granular and so ugly. We all just waited till the internet sort of came, became a little bit more. So I'm early adopter, but I'm certainly not the, the techie guys building the, the new uh, motorway. Now it's coming, um, it's really crept into our consciousness. And it also ties into a lot of my views on the macroeconomics about fiat currencies and other aspects, which I'm sure we'll get into later. What made you so excited about cryptocurrencies? Well, yeah, let's handle some of that now, in fact. So in, in, in our view, we currently have a nationalized fiat money system. In other words, all money that we trade uh, in has a color and it belongs to a particular nation state. We also have a very in global indebted um, environment attached to the issuance of those uh, fiat currencies and it's all government controlled. In other words, there's central banks, um, it's, it's very much an old system that is coming very close, in my opinion, to potentially falling apart. And then cometh the hour, cometh the man, so to speak. And this is why um, that my initial distance from Bitcoin has now changed with some real enthusiasm, because it does seem aligned to the creation of decentralized um, electronic money, uh, and hence why I think it's interesting. And in that process, because the total market cap of the cryptos in and around 90 uh, billion, they traded as high as 100 billion. Um, we, it's very small relative to how much um, actual currency is out there. You know, in the euro dollar, it's estimated that, you know, about four trillion trades a day 
you know, daily. That's just being swapped into bank, etc. We don't know for sure because it doesn't go for a single exchange, but this is, this, this is sort of educated people's estimates. So if we were to have, as many people are suggesting, just one trillion of fiat money, that's the nationalized, indebted paper, some people call confetti almost, being traded in into the new clean skin, no debt or nation-based debt attached to it, fiat currency of the crypto realm. Um, just imagine what that would do to the market caps if we had 100 billion. You're talking about a 10x moment alone um, if it's evenly distributed, which is unlikely to be, but just as a guide, over in a space of one year, in the case of one trillion coming into that. So I think it reaches a point that if you're ignoring cryptos, you may be missing something really, really big, and then you'll have what's known as FOMO, the fear of missing out <laughs> element. So in trading, there's those great fears, fear of losing money, and then one of the other that's really powerful is being the one that's left behind and watching everyone else make money. What do you think is the problem with the current system and governments? Debt has to be at the heart of it, you know. Um, so the, the monetary system is actually one that relies on an expansion of debt. By having an interest and an ursary extracting model, if you, if you lend one dollar into existence, you already need an expansion just to pay the interest of that initial dollar that is lent into interest. And then of course, as that gets moved around and loaned out, you continually need further expansion in the monetary supply to service interest. So the model is always one that eventually goes quite hyperbolic. And one of the reasons why I believe we have, or I assess that we have such low uh, interest rates is uh, we're reaching that hyperbolic point. In other words, the cost, just taking America for example, their, their revenue barely covers 50% of their expenditure. I think it's about 52, just under 52%. So they're borrowing into existence an another entire revenue stream again just to service existing needs. Uh, and of course they've still got the demographic of the boomers becoming pensioners and starting to draw on all of those unfunded liabilities such as welfare, Medicaid. So we've got a lot of mm, moments about our existing system. What is today's problem with central banking? Well, I think central banks have got, become too much part of the story. You know, they, they were supposed to be silent, rarely referred to, not seen, taking the punch bowl away kind of guys when uh, the, the manias were taking hold. And what's actually happened is they've become almost asset managers, um, they've inf the inflation of assets uh, and the deflation thereof, they've taken responsibility almost for, for that. At the moment we're seeing the Fed make right now quite um, cautious sounds about the US stock market and asset valuations. In, in other words, they've, they get becoming, it's kind of like the cricket scorers are running out trying to show the batsmen how to bat, um, when they should literally just be keeping score uh, uh, from the back room. And so they're, they're too involved, uh, and, and I think also the whole model is, is, is at the end of its lifespan.